Don't you just love the sound of running water? Is the bird in the hand really worth two in the bush? Well, according to Julian Bajini, a bird in the hand is technically worth 2.48 birds in the bush. Why am I lying on a rock? Kind of hurts. Man. First of all, you're stupid. And how? How much should I feed my baby tortoise to ensure that it's growing healthily? And uh, basically, how fast is too fast for a baby tortoise to grow? That is today's question on Ask Camp Kenneth. You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here and it's time for another Ask Cam Kenan question. And this one comes from Jen Eaton and she specifically asks, how do you know if your baby sulcata is growing at the right speed? I have a two, I have two seven month old sulcatas. I weigh them monthly and their weight goes up, but slowly. Is it better that they grow slow and steady? And the more you feed them, will they grow faster? And is that good? Great question, Jen. I know I've talked about this before on the channel. Let's look at these little tortoises. I don't have any sulcatas right now, but I do have a beautiful little elongated tortoise. We have a cherry head tortoise that's making a quick getaway here. Let me get it back over here uh, so I don't misplace the little guy. And then, of course, we have this incredible T-positive for albino um, uh, elongated tortoise. So to answer your question, Jen, um, I don't have any sulcatas hatched, but this, this answer is true amongst most tortoises. Now, even though certain tortoises grow faster than others, and I've noticed that sulcatas tend to be a species that really puts on weight quickly uh, the more you feed them. That is also going to be true about other tortoises, although they may grow slower. So basically, like our cherry head tortoise, this guy's got spunk. Even within the same species, you may get a tortoise that's just naturally predetermined to grow quicker than the others. These little guys, their job is to hide, eat, and grow as quickly as they can in the wild so that they are no longer looked at as prey from different predators. Now that being said, in captivity, you gotta remember we're feeding these animals uh, mostly a diet uh, that they wouldn't get in the wild. That's why I like to bring mine out so they can eat all these different weeds and so on and get more of a natural diet. But in captivity, these guys are gonna be getting more store-bought store produce, which is gonna have way more nutrients than that, they, than that they would have in the wild. Also, you can probably feed them more regularly. Um, and more amounts of food than in the wild. Now remember, they're designed to eat and nibble and move around and eat and nibble, and what they're nibbling on is really food that doesn't have a lot of nutritional content. We're talking about weeds and flowers and look at these different clovers and things like that. That's basically food for them, and it's really good, but it's also not food that is very high in a caloric, in uh, caloric, uh, well, yeah, density. That makes sense, right? Cool. This little guy's doing great, though. I love to watch them clamber around, even as youngsters, because they're really finding their way. So basically, guys and girls out there asking this question, what I would suggest is slow and steady. As long as your sulcatas are putting on weight, they're actually eating, they're drinking, they're moving around, they're doing everything a baby tortoise should be doing, and they are, in fact, growing, I think slow and steady is good. Because sometimes you can attribute pyramiding to a tortoise that is growing too quickly. So that's something you want to avoid. Uh, although in some cases, pyramiding is unavoidable. Uh, some animals are just more predisposed to becoming pyramided or slightly pyramided. So don't freak out. But how about this little uh, T-positive uh, albino for albinism? Uh, this animal is T-positive. It, it actually has one of the enzymes uh, I forget the name of it, Triantspatane, somebody Google that. I can't, I can't remember the name, but it's an enzyme that helps in the production of melanin. However, it doesn't get expressed in the same way that this tortoise's melanin gets expressed. You see, there's some darkness on the shell. This animal definitely has more of the naturalistic colorings of 
the elongated tortoise. But when you see them side by side, you can really see the difference in the two tortoises' coloration. There is little to no black on this tortoise at all, except for its eyes. And that's what makes this animal not a true albino, because it in fact has black eyes. If its eyes were pink, it would be a true albino, but this is T-positive for albinism. This is a very beautiful tortoise, uh, so the elongateds are awesome. Now, as far as their growth rates, the elongated tortoises uh, grow fairly slowly. Um, they're an awesome species, however. They don't get very large. In fact, they'll get about as big as a cherry head tortoise. So that's about a foot in overall length. Uh, but look at this, he's gonna nibble on some of these plants, I think. How cool is that, guys? You know a tortoise is happy when you can pick it up, put it down, and it starts nibbling right away. So amazing to see these little guys out and about. So I recommend anyone who can do this and get their tortoise outdoors to nibble uh, as long as they know that the food or what they're nibbling on hasn't been treated with chemical fertilizers. Uh, it's really a great way to get them outside and enriched. This little cherry head just wants to boogie, man. That is a fast little guy. So anyhow, they are exploring. Uh, they're growing at a nice, slow, and steady rate. Remember, they are the tortoise, right? So just like, just like Aesop's Fable. Slow and steady is always gonna be the best. These little guys uh, are gonna be just super happy here. Your job is to make sure they're getting the right nutrition in the right amount. So I would suggest giving these little guys either a little bit of food every day or you can feed them once every other day uh, with a treat on the weekends uh, and just be making sure that you're soaking them and you have fresh water in the enclosure because it's a myth that tortoises get all the water they need through their food. That's not the case. They do in fact need water. So all of those things uh, in concert, including the heating and UVB lighting of these animals, uh, their requirements, with all those things being put together, you're gonna get nice, steady growth, which is what you want. All right, Jen, I hope I answered your question. I know it wasn't sulcatas that we had in this video, but it's true of all the baby tortoises here. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching these little guys clamber around my front pond. And uh, there you go. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and join me every Saturday when I ask, or rather, when you ask and I answer a question. And if you want to get a question answered, go to patreon.com slash campcannon and join up to help us out. We'll answer one of your questions out there. Thanks so much, everybody. It looks like a tortoise race. And we got a cherry head in the lead. Followed by the T-positive. T-positive for albino. It's going to be a real fast race. And this tortoise is very, very slow. You might want to move, buddy. See ya.